Okay, good morning everyone. Let's get started. Am I audible? Please let me know. Make sure that I'm audible. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Last lecture we discussed Prince algorithm. And the algorithm was to given a graph, build a minimum cost spanning tree. And they given the resources from the books as well as other places. Of course, you can Google it out and find number of explanations. Your suggestion would be to take different examples, work out the problem, make sure that you understand what a prime algorithm is. So just for a review, essentially what we were doing in the Prim's algorithm that we were starting with one node, we're making it part of a tree, and then we are growing that tree one node at a time. We made a given tree, and once we had a given tree, we, we start with one node, we add another node, this becomes a tree, and then we look at other node which are closest to this tree, then we add another node, whole thing becomes a tree. Then look at whichever node is closer. We made another node, the whole thing becomes a tree. Then look at whichever node is closer. So essentially, we were growing the minimum cost spanning tree one node at a time. And that was the primarily the Prince algorithm. And once we add all the n minus one node to the first node, we basically get the minimum cost spanning tree. So what's the greedy step? Greedy step is we are taking the closest node to the given tree, and that is what we call greedy means, which is the closest. And that was the greedy step, and we saw that the algorithm works. In Kriskal algorithm, is a different approach. Rather than taking one node at a time, you start looking at the edges. And that means we start with basically a forest. It is a given n node. I have a node 1, node 2, node 3, node 4, node 5, node 6, and number of nodes. And we have different number of edges. Something of this kind. And they are different costs. Let's say 2, 4, 8, 6. 5, 10, 11, 12, 6, and so on and so forth. So we take one node at a time, as I said. So assuming we have number of nodes, which are connected by different edges, and my edges are like this. Whichever they are connected, we pick one node at a time. Sorry, not we pick one edge at a time. And to start with, we don't look at any edge, we just look at only nodes. So look at all the nodes. So all these nodes basically make a forest. That is what we do. Each of these nodes make a forest. Then we look at all the edges pick up one edge at a time, and we pick up the lowest cost edge. Assuming, let's say this is my lowest cost edge. Let's say this is A, this is B. So now this A, B becomes one forest, and we have other forest. Now let's look, we have take another edge. Let's say this C and D is next minimum cost edge. Then this becomes another forest. So we keep making edges. Let's say thirdly, we get another edge, let's say EF. So now we see we have one forest, which is A to B. We have one for this thing, C to D. We have one E to F, and so on. And sometimes you pick an edge. Now let's say I pick an edge B to D. When I pick edge B to D, this was the independent forest. 
the independent. So this whole thing could be connected. And so far, there is no cycle. Now, next time, if I look at the edge, let's say from T to, let's say, node some G, if the moment I add this edge, this becomes a cycle. So I don't consider this. So key lying is in when we make it, when we join the nodes to two different forests and make them a part of a single tree. So this is a single connected component. This is another single connected component. And when you take an edge, which doesn't make a cycle, whole thing becomes a single connected component. Any point in time, if you take an edge, Let's say take an edge, this is one connected component, the other connected component, and we already have an edge between this. And if you take an edge, which makes a cycle, we discard that. So key lies in checking that if we add an edge, does it make a connected does it make a cycle? If so, we discard that. And that's the approach we basically take in Crystal algorithm. So what do you primarily do? First, make sure we sort the edges in non decreasing order that means the smallest cause as first then the next smallest cause the difference between non decreasing and increasing is is such that your node will always be increasing non decreasing means next as could be same cost or could be more it's not decreasing the difference and then we basically grow one edge at a time and then we basically get number of forests as i explained join the forest to make one connected component so each time we pick an edge from the sorted list, lowest cost edge. If it creates a cycle, discard the edge. If it doesn't create a cycle, then we basically add the edge and the, the two forests, so let's say F1 and FK, and become a single forest and process continues till you get into that mode. So let's look at this with the following example. Let's say, understand with the example, and then we can go through the steps. Let's we have this graph A, B, C, D with five edges. So assuming if you were to sort, C, D would come first. So we'll have edge C, D. So my first edge would be C, D. Then I would have A, B. Then I would have B, D. So my first edge would be A, B, sorry, not A, B. C D one, then I would have A B two, then I would have B D three, then I have A C four, and then we have B C six. We start with the lowest cost edge. We're starting with each node is a forest by itself. Now we pick up the lowest cost edge, which will pick the edge. CD and so we join the CD and we join the CD. So I have one for a CD, other is tree A, other tree is B, or three trees. CD is one tree, A is another tree, B is another tree. Now I look at the next coast as my lowest coast as happens to be this AC, sorry, AB. So I join this A and B. When I join this A and B, this becomes another tree. So right now I have one tree, which is CD. I have another tree, which is AB, I have two different trees. Now look at the next course set, which is BD. Now look at the next course set, BD, tree. Look, this is tree one, this is tree two. By joining the SBD, there is no cycle, so we add the SBD. And now I have basically tree A, B, C, D. I can still look at more edges and continue. Now next we can look at the edge AC. When you look at the edge AC, it makes a cycle, don't include. Similarly, when you look at the edge BC, it makes a cycle, we don't include it. And then finally, we get the spanning tree. Let's look at the another example which we used in the prim tree. Look at the same example again. For the edges, so if you look at my lowest cost edge is BC. My lowest cost edge is starting with 
each node is a tree by itself. So I have six trees, and I start with <coughs> pick up the lowest cost ad, which is BC, and now BC becomes one tree, and I have another five trees. Now look at lowest cost, next lowest cost ad, which is EF. So I look at next lowest cost as EF, which is cost two, and since EF does not EF does not make it. Cycle. So we'll add this. Now, when I add this, you look at I have a tree BC, I have a tree EF, I have a tree A, and I have a tree D. Let's look at the next least cost set, which happens to be AB. I look at AB. When I look at the AB, adding an AB does not make a cycle. So I add the as AB. So now my tree is. One tree is ABC, other tree is EF, and which is fine. Now look at the next cost as I have a choice between C and F and BFF. I can pick any one. Let's say I pick BF. Adding the edge BF does not make a cycle. So I'll add this edge. And so my spanning tree becomes to so look at this whole thing. I have one spanning tree, these five nodes. And I have one spanning tree with node D. Now let's look at the next least cost set, which happens to be EF. EF is, if we look at cost phi, but the moment I add the CF, they will cycle BFC. And because it makes a cycle, I will not add this as, I'll skip this. Edge. Next least cost as is either I can pick AF or I can pick FD. Let's say I pick AF. If I put AF, it makes a cycle A, B, and F. And since it makes a cycle, we don't consider this as, we skip this as. Now let's pick the next least cost as, which is FD. Picking an FD, it does not make a cycle. So we'll add this. And now my whole tree become, and then look at the next edge, which is CD. The CD, by adding a CD, we get the cycle CBFD. So we don't include this edge. Next this cost as is AE. By doing an AE, it will make a cycle ABFE. So we don't include this edge. And similarly, next is ED. If you include this edge, this makes a cycle. We don't include this. And so we finally get the minimum cost spanning tree in this form. If in previous case, it doesn't have to be this only spanning tree. Like if, if you go back, instead of picking BF earlier, if we could have picked up TF, that would still have been fine. And my spanning tree would have been BC. Next least cost is two. Then A, this, then I include this. Next, BF will, so I cannot include this. I cannot include this because this makes a cycle. I'll include this. And so now you see, I have the whole spanning tree, A, B, C, F, D, and E. So my spanning tree basically becomes So there, there need not be only one minimum cost spanning tree. There could be multiple minimum cost spanning tree. And that is what basically <coughs> I'm trying to say. So having understood the concept, let's go and look at the algorithmic step. The key part is when the moment we look at an edge, how do we decide whether this makes cycle or not? But if you were to make a normal check, it will take me order and time, which could be too costly and affair. So we need to find an efficient way, and that is the approach we'll discuss in this lecture, which is what we'll do using what is called union fund. So it looks easy, so let's say how to implement. Basically put the edges in the sorted order, non-increasing order of weights. Sorry, is a wrong 
or the edges in this wrong non decreasing the typo there this should be non decreasing decreasing mean non decreasing meaning next cost as the cost of as ci should be less than or equal to cost of ci plus 1 if i were to say increasing then it would be ci would be less than or equal to ci plus 1 because next has could be same cost as the reason we say it is non decreasing and not increasing And key part is how do we check cycle because that is where maximum cost is taken and that's what we do and we'll go through and discuss what we call is union find approach to check for a cycle and same approach we'll do when we do the other algorithms like when it come to job scheduling we'll do that when we come to that why time complexity is m star log m which is iterated log which will come in a short while. If the simple logic implementation would be the following start the basically as a non decreasing order, as I said, of the weights. So that means weight of as EI1 should be less than or equal to EI2, and so on and so forth. So all the edges are sorted. If there are M edges, time to sort would be take M log M. Start with my three head zero edges. So I'll say this. Set of spanning three edges is five empty set, and my s count is zero. And I look at my spanning tree. If I have n nodes, so that means total I would have n minus one of spanning tree. So given that graph is v, my number of nodes would be v minus the number of edges would be v minus one. So basically keep running till I reach a s count of v minus one and I stop. So I say while s count is less than v minus 1 because the moment number of edges becomes n minus 1, I got my spanning t. Take the next lowest cost edge and look at if this new edge we took with the corresponding forest or corresponding set of t or edges, whatever I take on, does it make a cycle? If it does not make a cycle, this is a good edge added to my set ET of set of edges. If it makes a cycle, skip, go to the next one and increase under my S count because the moment my S count becomes V minus one, I stop. So primarily challenge in this is how do we make sure that EIK is a cycle? And that is what my key challenge is. And we look at how do we go about doing it. So let's look at typically what we do. So I'll go back to the previous case and tell you how we can give you an idea you don't find the approach and then we discuss how do you go about doing that <coughs> so look at how do you go about checking it what we can do is for each node we can say assign an id and check so let's say we find so for a we have six nodes a node a or let me put sorry i'll put it down node a b c d e and f so these are my nodes and initially i can say and this i can index using the node Let's say ID of node A is A, and ID of node B is B, ID of node C is C, this is D. Since each is a forest, I assign the node itself as an ID. The moment I pick an edge, the moment I let's say pick an edge BC, that means both of the nodes should have same ID. So I can take a lower order. So I change the ID of node C to make it ID of B. Now both B and C make an ID. B. Now next when I look at the as E F. Now I change the ID of F to make it E. So both E and F have the node ID E 
and this is B and C as node ID B. So look at any tree, all nodes would have the same ID. Next, I pick up the edge AB. Now pick up the edge AB. That means A should become part of A should become part of this. That means A should have same ID of this. Now either I have a choice of making ID B and C as same as A. Either I can make their ID as A or I can make the ID of A as B. Doing changing ID of B and C to A, I do two work. But changing ID of A, I do a one work. So I'll take the latter approach. So what we'll do is we'll change the ID of A to B. So rather than this B, I'll change the ID of A to B. So now if you look at all three nodes have the same ID as B, E and F have the ID E, and node D has the ID D. Now let's look at the next. As we look at the as BF. Now node B, we can index into this and see the ID is B. Node F, we can index and find ID is E. Since the ID of B and ID of F are different, that means they are belong to different tree. So they can be joined and I join them. And the moment I join them, now look, node with ID B, there are three nodes. And node with ID E, there are two nodes. It's better to change the ID of all the nodes having two nodes rather than having node with the group tree with three. So what we do is we change the ID of all these nodes to make it B and B. So now I have five nodes. A has ID B, B has ID B, C has ID B, E has ID B, F has ID B, and D has ID D still. Now we look at the next as, which is FC. If we now look at FC, F has the ID B, and C has the ID B. Both nodes have ID B. This implies they both belong to the same tree. So if I add this edge, it's going to make a cycle. So my cycle checking is simply find the ID of a node and if ID of a node, if the ID happen to be the same, then this makes a cycle, don't do it. If it is not same, then add it. But the moment I add a node to the tree, I need to change the ID. And so essentially there are two work we do. One is find the ID. The first operation we do is find find the ID and second operation we do is change the ID which we call as union. Union of two sets meaning change ID of one set as equal to that of another set and that's primarily what we do what we call is union find approach. Let me go back to this next set of slides. We already looked at this. <coughs> So what is my union find approach? If we look at, we basically make it upset and we say it's almost and then though not really actually n, but almost linear d will come to that. Why this has come to almost linear d n? So essentially, as I said, put all elements in an array and set their ID as the node ID, what is node ID? So uh, element A has ID A, element uh, node 1 has ID 1, node 2 has ID 2 and so on and so forth. So initially, all elements are divided into sets. Each element is just set by itself or a group by itself. And now we do two kind of operations. One is find the group ID to which the element belongs and second, merge the two sets. Now depending on the approach we take, either find could be costly or my merge could be costly. And we look at both the approaches and see for simple cases we need to do find. We'll keep find as a simpler and merge could be costlier. And then we look at the approach where merge could be simpler and find could be costlier. And we'll see that gives us better analysis of the algorithm. Now we have the E edges. So sorting E edges gives me order E log time. And while loop, we are looking at each edge. That means the whole while loop runs e times and look at the amount of work we do in each edge. Every time we look at the edge, 
we look, is it making a cycle? If it is making a cycle, whatever time that takes, and into E would basically be my time complexity. And we'll finally come to an approach called linear find algorithm and say it most optimal case will take log star n, which is iterated log, which I'll come in a short while, and that almost gives me linear time for all practical purposes. So that means for E as is each union find takes log star n time, the time taken is E log star. And primary time taken is by doing a cycle check. <coughs> so we'll look at again how to go about doing it. And so total time plus becomes E log E plus log star V. So if edges are basically sorted, there's a time taken, this dominates. If edges are sorted, then my time taken is only this and not this. If edges are not sorted, then this sorting is more time rather than finding and making a tree. And we'll look at those approaches today. So first look at the how do we make the union and find. One approach is make find cheaper. That means do find order one time, make union one in more time. Other approach is make union in constant time order one, but make find in order some most costly time. And look at both the approaches and see how the two approaches work. And we'll give an example there. And the moment to do merge, we, what we'll do is we'll change the ID of a smaller group that corresponds to ID of the larger group. And that is what we had done. So look at what kind of data structure we can basically use. So approach one is quick find. That means find is efficient. That means find is always done in order one time. And we'll see how much union would take. Now, if you are keeping all the group ID of an element in the array, if I keep all the elements in the array, then find and this array keeps the ID. So finding the ID is just index into the array, look at the ID, and that gives me the find time. So find could be order one because it is a single lookup. This is what we're talking about. However, merge takes more time. Why? Because let's look at these K nodes. Let's say A, A1, A2 to AK. We have a K nodes and we have some, let's say, P nodes, AP1, AP2, AP3. So let's say this number is size K and this number is size P. If K is greater than P and all the would have some ID, let's say some ID is X of this and this ID of P nodes is Y. If K is greater than P means number of nodes having ID X is K and number of nodes having ID Y is P, if K is greater than P, then it would be better to change ID of all the nodes ID Y to ID of X because we'll be doing less work. And that's what we we'll basically do. So each time we change, we change the ID, but we need to look at how many times this ID gets changed. And that is where the smart way of counting to find what really happens. Essentially, we are doing is change the, all the element of A to that of B or vice versa. And we look at that elements, which are the smaller size, and that's what basically we do. And in this case, time taken is n log n. And we'll come to that, why this is n log n. You look at this way, each time an element's ID change, group size doubles. Let's look at the way following. I would say, let's say I have a sum set. Let's say this element size has size K. This element is size P. And let's say K is greater than P. So total set size is, and I'm merging an edge. So total set, after I merge, total size of size set is K plus P. If K is greater than P, that means K plus P is greater than or equal to 2P. Because K is more than P, so K plus P is greater than 2P. So look. Whichever the smaller size is, when I merge, my size doubles, at least that of smaller size. So how many times a node would change? Let's say this particular node or some particular node is so unlucky that it always gets changed. It always gets changed means first time it is one, 
next time it changed it becomes part of a group of size 2 next time the id change it will become part of a group of size 4 next time this id changes it will become part of a group whose size will become 8 that means it can keep on changing till the size of a group becomes n so each time i change my size of a group doubles that means maximum number of times i'm changing let's say the id get changed k times that means 2 power k would be equal to n implies k is equal to log n that maximum time an id can be changed for each node is log n time and we're talking of changing id of in union operation we're talking of changing the id of nodes each node can be changed maximum log n time so total time it takes to change the id of all nodes would be n log n and that is to the base 2 and that is where time complexity is so each time i do a merge id gets changed total time it takes to change the id is n log n and that is what we basically do <coughs> so we'll continue so in this case essentially in quick find my find takes order one time, my merge, because each node can be changed order log n times, the total time taken is order n log n. If there are any questions, please do let me know. Any questions about why it takes order n log n time? I will take a second approach, and in second approach, we will basically make union as constant time, and we'll say find is little more costlier, and that is what basically beauty of this union find algorithm is. So let's look at approach two. We make union as time constant, but find could be costlier and say, even though with initially find looks costlier, but actually it could be made more efficient down the line. So what essentially we do is, rather than changing the ID, like in the previous case, we have a nodes, we don't keep them an array, we keep them in a pointer and change the pointer to parent node. Let's say this is A, this is B, this is C. And, and so now if I need to change the ID of B, I'll make A point to B. That means I, and if I change to ID of this group, it's to let's say this is D and E, and E, E, D becomes, so I'll make B as a child of D. I basically do a pointer operation parent of the tree root, I'll make root as a child of another root. That means my union time takes order one time. Because all I'm doing is changing the pointer of the root of that tree. But finding the ID, I need to traverse from child, go to the parent, go to the parent, go to the parent, till I go to the root. So I, to find the ID, I need to traverse the tree. That takes more time. But changing the ID, changing the group, I just make this root as part of another root, and that's how I do it. And that basically is what is the second approach, which is called quick union, but find is a costly affair. I'll give with the example as well there and look at what happens. Essentially, each entry is a group, and let's look at the diagram. Each point is initially nil. So look at from the example. Next slide. So initially, let's say whose basically <coughs> a pointer is nil. So that means node C here, node C point to A, D point to C. So ID of D, if I need to find ID of D, I traverse, go to C, from C go to A, since pointer of A is nil, that means ID of D, ID of D happens to be A, ID of E also happens to be A, because I traverse the tree, E to C, T to A, a is nil that means id of d id of d is a id of e is a id of c is a and id of a is a same way in this node id of b is id of f is b id of b is b now let's say i need to merge this operation let's say i need to consider the as adding this one node to the part of other all we need to do is if this tree 
has to become part of this tree all we need to do is change this pointer nil to point to here and so this merging becomes only one operation changing the pointer it takes over one time but finding the id takes me more time and that is what we basically do <laughs> so let's look at how do we proceed i need to do let's say union ab operation means i need to join the group whose id is a to the group whose id is b and how do we do that essentially what we are saying is make b point to the true a so point root of the this node to root of this and that's essentially what we basically do and this how we do that we make b and so by order one time we join the two tree and we are fine with it however finding i need to traverse the tree and it takes more time so union takes order one time finding takes my more time because length of the tree could still be again log n so if we look at what typically happens when i'm merging the two trees let's say this is one tree and this need not be a binary tree this could be anything this is one tree i have another tree anytime i merge i make it as part of this root you look what is happening here when i do this merge size of the total tree at least become double than the size of previous tree that means each time i merge the tree which i belong to the total number of nodes at least would double now when i'm merging what is the height of new tree let's say this is my tree a and this is my tree b let's say height of tree a is height of tree a is h a height of tree b is h b now i have two choices either h a height is greater than of h b if this is the case at best height could have increased is greater than this h b that means h is at least one more than h b so by joining this height does not increase in other cases height happen to be the same and then the height would basically the heights are same then by adding this h a would become h a plus 1 height increases by 1 each time i merge my height could increase at most by 1 and number of nodes in the whole tree at least doubles so i keep doubling it that means maximum height of my tree can only be log n the maximum height of a tree could be log n that means any find operation go to the root will take me log n time so my find takes log n time my merge takes order one time and my union takes order one time and that what basically we do and that's a proof i am talking about here and if height is greater than this then height remains same otherwise height becomes one more and we are doubling the height and since each time we increase the height or double merge the tree number of at least doubles and by that logic height the total height of the tree a node can change only at most is id log n times because height doubles so that means height of tree can at most be log n time and hence find operation at most takes log n time and since we are searching for all the nodes my taken would be e log n time let's see how do we even have two trees here we basically need to merge and primarily so this one tree if we look at this is one tree this is another tree and i need to make three as part of one so i basically make three joining two and this is so you look at height remain the same but if had height be the different height will be increased by one and that essentially what we are doing so my reunion is quick so now look at can we do further better improvement 
find operation. Essentially, what is we call is approach called path compressor. Now, when I do a find, so let's say I'll go back to previous case. Let's say I merged, and I need to find ID of node two. If I need to find ID of node two, I go from two to five, five to one, and I traverse the tree. Now I know that the my ID of two is one. So once I do this operation, I can actually make sure I can do that. Make two directly as make two directly as child of or uh, make one as parent of two, and that's what I do. So basically, the moment I traverse the tree for each node, I can make I can change the parent directly upon to the root. So I'm come so first time I'm a traverse, but next time. I'll do only one traversal, and that is what we call is path compressor. So let's look at what we're talking about here with an example there. So my time register does not change, but what we'll see is path compression gives me better stuff. So let's typically what happens. Let's say this is my tree, and I need to search the find ID of six due to some merge operation. Parent of seven is six, parent of six is three, parent of three is one. And I need to find the ID of node six. So I traverse to six, goes to three, two different path, three is goes to one. Now, when I do this search, in this process, what I can do is I can make three directly point to one, and I can make six directly point to one. So I can make three directly point to one and six directly point to one, all the node in the path. So look at all the nodes starting from here to this, they all point directly to one. That means next time, if I need to find the ID of any node, it will take me only order one time. And that means I become find efficient. So first time, it might take me log n time. But after that, for other node, it becomes order one time. And that is what we call is path compression. And this is what we basically call is iterative logarithm function. Because we keep reducing it. So the proof is not part of your this thing. So I would not go through it complicated, but understand what is iterated logarithm function is. It defined as log star n as one plus log star of log n with upper ceiling limit. With log two is equal to one is the base case. So now look at how does log star n for different values of n works out. When n is equal to 4, which is basically 4 is 2 raised to power 2. So log 4 is 1 plus log star log of n. So it becomes 1 plus log star of log of 2 raised to power 2. Log of 2 raised to power 2, if you look at log 2 raised to power 2 base 2 is equal to this power comes here because we know log x key power m is nothing but m log x with this this becomes 2 log 2 and base 2 so this is 1 this gives me 2 so this basically gives me 2 so I get 1 plus log star of 2 I got log star of 2 log star 2 is 1, 1 plus 1, answer is 2. That means log star 4 is 2. Now look at log star 16. 16 is 2 raised to power 4. This would be 1 plus log star of log of 2 raised to power 4. Log of 2 raised to power 4 will give me log of log star 4, log 2, and my base is 2. This is basically 1. So what I get is 1 plus log star 4 and then log star 4 is 2. So log 16 would basically become 1 plus log star 2 raised to power 4 which is 1 plus log star 4. Log star 4 is 2. So it's a log star 16 is 3. Let's look at log star 6 power 5, 3, 6, that is 16 power 2 raised to power 16. When I do this, 
it becomes 1 plus log star 2 raised to 16 and this value would basically give me 16 because this would be 16 log 2 so what I get is 1 plus log star 16 and log star 16 we know answer is 3 so 1 plus 3 becomes 4 so log star 2 raised to power 16 is this now let's look at the next number log star 2 raised to power 6 for a 3 6 note 2 raised to power 6 5 5 3 6 is very very large number for all practical purposes you will not find a graph which having more than this no you take all human beings anybody this is very very large number so for all practical purposes you will never have a node a graph having more than this node the so log star this would basically give me log star 2 raised to power 16 which answer would basically be 5 that means for any given n sorry for any given n my log star n is 5 so that and 5 I can take it as a constant that means any time I do a find operation my time taken is 5 and remember our cost was a running a loop e log time my merge takes order one time my find was taking log star n which is limited to 5 so it practically becomes 5 e which is order e and hence we call it almost linear time so in th theory though it is log star n but all practical purposes it becomes order e time that's what we call a order linear time so in summary we looked at triscal algorithm we talked about sorting the edges first and we basically take one edge at a time keep looking at number of trees and join the two trees if it makes a cycle discard the edge and if it doesn't make a cycle add so we basically do two operations one is union one is find we took our first approach find taking order one time and union taking login time by changing the id then we change the perspective we said union will take order one time and find will take order login time and using path compression the time will become less and that essentially to initial time from city this with path compression time taken was e log of star v which is almost linear and that's how it works we'll take the same approach next time and will next lecture we will look at the job scheduling which also makes your union fine so it is a new topic i would recommend to go through the books go through the literature ask if you have any questions please reach out to me send me an email or we can discuss next time so next class would be on monday same time and we'll discuss the job scheduling problem and next week we'll look at all other kind of the sort as path first and the Huffman coding algorithm and we continue with the effort. If any questions, please feel free to ask. Let me know if you have any questions. Anyone has a question, you can ask me through chat or voice box or anything. And if any other time you need to ask, please send me an email and I can schedule, I can have a session where we can discuss, explain your doubts. So raise your questions, send me an email, we can schedule a meeting or we can even you do it. Again, the web kind of discussion conference and work with it. If there are no questions, I'll stop and looking forward to our class next class on Monday. Thank you.